One kid, one vote. These were the words of my second grade teacher, Mrs. Byers. These words changed the way I experienced education forever. I grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota. I attended public schools from kindergarten through 12th grade. In every classroom, I was one of few people of color, even fewer blacks, and often the only Muslim. I represented a minority faith, a minority ethnicity, and a minority worldview. I was a cultural other. To be a cultural other, I didn't need to fail an intelligence test, and I didn't need to be unsuccessful at two eight-week interventions. To be a cultural other, I simply needed a belief. A belief that my genius, my legacy, my culture, and my worldview was not valued in my classroom or my school. At seven years old, that belief was created. At seven years old, I was a second grader in Mrs. Byers' classroom. And Mrs. Byers was an amazing teacher because she understood that education was about more than teaching kids to read, write, and do math. She understood that education was about using this information to help people. The first day of class, Mrs. Byers said to us, she said, students, this year we're going to be successful as a community. And we're going to record our success on a sticker chart. For every day that we're successful as a community, we'll put a sticker on the chart. And when we reach 30 stickers, we're going to celebrate with a pizza party. <laughs> we all cheered. We were excited. We couldn't wait. Every single day, we worked hard collectively to be successful and to earn our sticker. And the day finally came. We had earned our 30 stickers. The day before our pizza party, Mrs. Byer said, class, today, I'm going to teach you how America works. I'm going to teach you all about democracy. Today, we're going to decide what topping we have on our pizza tomorrow using a class vote. One kid. One vote, and the majority rules. We each took our turn casting our vote. My friend Sammy went first. Pepperoni! Katie went after him. Anchovy! Ryan followed her. Sausage! I waited for my time, and I raised my hand. I said, cheese! We continued until everybody had an opportunity to cast their vote. And at the end, Mrs. Byers tallied the votes and said, class, it's been decided. Tomorrow we're going to have pepperoni pizza. I raised my hand and I said, but Mrs. Byers, I can't eat pepperoni. She looked me in my eyes and said, Kasim, one kid, one vote, and the majority rules. This experience created a belief in me that I was a cultural other. I was being socialized to believe that my story had no value. I was fortunate because I had parents that empowered me with these words. They said, Kasim, if your story is not being taught in the classroom, then you be the teacher. And for the next 10 years, I was. When I reimagine education, I imagine a system that destroys the myth of his story in order to tell the truth of our story. When I reimagine education, I imagine a young girl named Gabby from Peru sitting in her history class, and right before her teacher tells her about the potato famine that brought Irish immigrants to America, she says, Gabby, did you know that Peruvian scholars had tins of potatoes and they used environmental science to master the dry freezing process and the potato was imported into Ireland to help grow that community? I imagine that Gabby hears these words and becomes inspired by her cultural legacy. And she re-engages her education with a newfound motivation. When I reimagine education, I imagine a young black boy named Issa sitting in his geometry class. And right before he becomes overwhelmed by mathematical computations, his teacher says, Issa, did you know that before Pythagoras came up with his famous Pythagorean theorem, he was a student in Africa at the great universities in ancient Kemet. I imagine Issa hears these words, and he begins to believe that the key to every mathematical problem lives within him. When I reimagine education, 
I'm back in my second grade classroom. And when I say, Mrs. Byers, I can't eat pepperoni, she says, class, do you see? This is what majority rules does to communities. It makes it impossible for everyone to get what they need. Who will make it their business over the next 20 years to take their education seriously, grow into an adult that speaks out, challenges, and changes these systems that prevents the entire community from tasting success? I imagine that my heart is full, inspired with truth, and I respond, Mrs. Byers, I will, we will. Thank you.